If you're looking to build a web app, well, Azure Static Web App Service is fantastic. It allows you to automatically build and deploy full stack apps straight to Azure from just a code repository. For example, the workflow allows you to host your code in GitHub or in Azure DevOps, and then every time you make a code change, for example, it's gonna have already built the workflow that you need to push your code into Azure Static Web Apps and automatically run your application, which could also have an API using Azure Functions. So Static Web Apps is a really flexible platform allowing you to use all sorts of libraries and frameworks for things like Angular, React, and Blazor, and many more. So let's dive in and look at how you can start a web app using Azure Static Web Apps. All right, so before we start getting our hands dirty inside the Azure portal, we need to go ahead and create a repository and we're gonna be using GitHub with our website code. I'm gonna be using this quick start building your first static site in the Azure portal because everyone can go here and you can use the template for their repository. What's cool here is you'll notice that you could do this demonstration with no framework, which is what we're gonna be doing. You use Angular, Blazor, so on and so forth. But we're gonna stay with the no framework, and then we're gonna select this GitHub link, which is gonna bring us out to be able to create a new repository based on this template. So to start this, we just need to give it a name. I'm gonna go ahead and call it First Static Web App. Yeah, we're getting our first website built here. This is pretty exciting. We're gonna call the repository exactly that. You can choose now whether you want this to be a public repo where anyone can see it on the internet, or you can choose private. Because we're gonna be messing around with this and probably deleting it afterwards, I'm just gonna choose private, and now we're ready to rumble. So at this point, I'm gonna hit create repository from template. Then in a couple of seconds, this repository is gonna be built, and we're gonna have all of our code now right within your GitHub account, of course, if you haven't already signed in, you may have to do that, but in my world, I'm already signed into my GitHub account, and now I can see this repository. And this is really interesting. You can see that in here, we have our source folder, and this is what it's gonna be using. This indexed HTML is our website. So at this point, we can now go ahead and jump over to the Azure portal because we've got the foundations we need to get our website going. So now we're here inside the Azure portal. Let's go ahead and find static web apps. So to do that, I'm just gonna to go to search and then choose static and then web apps. You can continue to type it, but I'm just gonna select the service now that we're here. And at this point, we can see we don't have any web apps running. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and click create, which you could do up here, or you could do create static web app as well. I'm just gonna choose create and we can move on. Okay, so now we're here in the basics page. We need to fill in some information to get our static web app created. So I'm gonna leave my subscription as my Visual Studio, but I don't currently have a resource group. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create new. I'm gonna call this RG static web app and then hit okay. And at this point, we can then give our static web app a name and I'm just gonna do the same thing that we called our GitHub repository, so our first static web app. And this doesn't have to be unique like some services in Azure, you can call this what you need. And then we've got the choice of what hosting plan do you want. And first up, look at that, free for hobby or personal project, which is fantastic for what we're doing right now. If you wanna build your own website and get experience, you don't have to pay any money to get going. Of course, if you wanna know the difference between what free is and what standard is, you could hit the compare plans and have a look down at what the differences are and why you may need to move from free to standard. But we're gonna leave it as free and move on. Now you can choose where you want your Azure function. If you're using an Azure function API to call maybe another backend service or something else and for your staging details for your web app. I'm gonna choose what's closest to me so I'm gonna go for West US 2. Now next up, we can choose our deployment details. You can see there's a couple of sources that you could go with. You could choose GitHub, you could choose Azure DevOps, or if you're using something else. In my case, we're gonna be using GitHub. That's where we created our repository from, and that's what we need to sign into. So you can see here that I've already got my GitHub account assigned to this, but in your world, you may need to click sign in. 
And at that point, it's going to tell you, you know, do you want to authorize Azure Static Web Apps, which gives the ability for full control of this private repositories and gives us the ability to update GitHub Actions. Once you've done that, you can just authorize the web app and you'll be signed in. At this point, we can now move in to choosing all of our deployment details for our GitHub repository. So under organization, I'm just going to choose my GitHub name, which is Harry Lout. And then under repository, we're going to select our first static web app. That's where we use the template. And now we can choose a branch. We only have one branch, so we're going to choose main. And now we can go ahead and do our build details. This is where we would add some values. So GitHub Actions and the workflow there knows how to update our application based on the changes that we make. So under build presets here, you can see that you can choose all these different frameworks, the static site generators, and at the bottom here, we've got custom. And we're not using any frameworks or anything like that. So I'm going to choose custom. And now we have a couple of options. So first of all, where is our app location? And we're going to do forward slash source. And if you just want to quickly know why we're doing that, if we go back to our GitHub here and choose our first static web app, we can see that under the source folder, this is where our index.html is. So I am pointing to this location for it to find my index.html. We're not using any APIs in this example, so we're going to leave that blank. And then output, in my case, we're just going to make that the same as the app location. And you could go ahead and move forward and do tags. We're not going to use tags for this demonstration, so I'm going to choose review and create. Of course, you can now look down this, make sure that you're happy with what you're about to do. And when you are, let's go ahead and select create. Thankfully, creating a static web app doesn't take long at all. That only took a few seconds, and we can already see now that our deployment is complete. So. Let's dive in and hit go to resource. Now things are getting pretty exciting. We're here looking at that we have our first web app running in Azure. You can see we've got the browse ability to go look at what we've got, and we can see that we've got a URL now for our website, that we're bringing it from GitHub. However, what you will notice is it's saying, thank you for using the Azure static web apps. We've not received any content yet check here for your GitHub action run. So if we select this, what it's going to do is now bring us into GitHub and we can see that it's actually committed this code and it's doing all the workflow that it needs for our website to get that index.html and so on and so forth. So we're just going to give this a moment and when it's done, we'll come back. And look at that, in 1 minute 20, our GitHub workflow has been completed. So now if we jump back into the Azure portal, Let's just go ahead and refresh this a moment. We can now see that we don't have that message anymore. So if I went and clicked Browse, we have our first website. It's not very exciting, don't get me wrong. It only says vanilla JavaScript app. However, it is our first web app running for free and with certificates. Look at that, HTTPS. We click on that, we can see that our connection is secure. This is so quick and easy to get going with. And there are different things you could now do. For example, we could see here that we could do IAM, so our identity and access management. You can go ahead and configure this environment a bit more. We can also add custom domains. Right now I have an auto-generated domain in here, but I could go ahead and add in a custom domain. So if we wanted to go to www.harrylouton.com or whatever your website might be, we can do that. You can also go change your hosting plan after the event. So if you've built something and then you think, oh, actually, I need to upgrade, you can do that at any time. And we're going to be talking about environments in a moment, but this is really cool. This allows you to actually create a staging environment. So if you make some changes to your code before you go ahead and submit it to production. And that's exactly what we're going to look at now. OK, back in GitHub, let's go ahead and make some changes to our web app and look at the flow of how this works with our first static web app. So let's click into our repository. And then from here, what I'm going to do is we've only got one main branch right now. So if I made changes to this and then committed it, well, that's going to change our production website, which maybe if you're testing around, that's OK. but you're probably not going to want that to happen. You're going to want it to go to a staging environment, make sure you're happy with your code, 
and then publish it to the main branch. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go ahead and type in development. And now we can do create branch for development. So now any of the coding that we do here, we can publish out to that staging environment. So we're gonna go ahead and go to source and then index. And this is where all of our website code really is today. And we could see that from we had the vanilla JavaScript app in H1, so our header, and we could see that on our website as well. So we're gonna go and choose the edit button here. And we could do all this in your normal coding IDE. We could be in you know, Visual Studio Code or whatever you use, but just for the simplicity of this demo, we're gonna just mess around here in GitHub. So what I'm gonna do is just change out our head one to say, I just built my first static web app in Azure. And of course, it wouldn't be some form of website example if we didn't say, hello world. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just change our title here to just first app. Why not, eh? So at this point, we've made the changes in our development branch. What we're gonna do is go to the bottom here and just commit these changes into that branch. And if we go back to our repository, this will be interesting here, is now we're back in the main branch. You can see we've got two branches before we only had one. And we can see that development had recent pushes less than a minute ago because we just made those changes. So to be able to get these changes into our static web app, we need to do this compare and pull request. So let's go ahead and select that. And at this point, we could go ahead and make a comment updating dev to main, for example, and then do create pull request. And we're not gonna dive too deep into all of this, but what we can see here is that it's going through and it already built all these workflows for us. We didn't have to do this, which is really a great win by using the, the templates and using static web apps. But we're gonna let this run through, and when it's done, we're gonna go back and look at our web app. Okay, so we can see that our Azure Static Web App CICD build deploy job pull request has been completed. This branch has no conflicts, we could go and merge it. But before we merge development into main, let's jump back to the Static Web App. So we're now here in the Azure portal under the environments, and this is really interesting. So we still see our production that was updated you know, 4.30, but now we have a preview deployment. So we did that pull request, we haven't merged it yet, but it automatically went and created us a sandbox here for us to look at what the changes would do. So if we go to the right hand side and choose browse, we now have our website and we did this changes. We said, I just built my first static web app and we did the hello world. So at this point, we have the two environments. If I go back, we can browse production, so we can still see what our code had, the vanilla JavaScript app. We can then see our first app has those changes. So this gives you that flexibility to make sure that you aren't breaking your production environment before making any changes. But now if we wanna say, yep, we're happy with all those changes, we can go back to GitHub. Now we're back inside of GitHub, if we wanna actually complete our pull request here to move our code from development to our main branch and make this code in our production website, is we can just complete our merge pull request and then we can do confirm merge. At this point, this now tells us that our pull request has been successfully merged and closed. If we go back to our repository now, we can see we're in the main branch we can go to source, we can go to index, and our code here, like I just built my first static web app, is now within our production section. So if we jump back here into our static web app, we go ahead and refresh our environments, shortly we're gonna see the removal of the preview deployment, and we're just gonna end up with a production environment with the code changes we made. And there we have it, we now no longer have a preview environment, just our production. And if we go and hit browse, we'll now see that it has all those code changes that we made, and that's being reflected on our URL. Well, really, that's all there is to just how to get started with static web apps. There's so many exciting things you can go do with different frameworks and so on and so forth. But 
If you're starting out in Azure and web development, I recommend you give this a try, and I look forward to seeing what you build within Azure Static Web Apps.